good morning or afternoon or evening or late night or whatever it may be based on your geographical location. This one's gonna be a hobo story time, so strap down and get ready because let's jump right into it. So for the last little bit I've been trying to figure out where the best place for me to start this story is and it's not the beginning. I think it's a little bit before the beginning with some background information for many new people. Long story short, I'm homeless. I, I prefer hobo or vagabond. I have done a little bit of traveling, so I really like vagabond. Uh, that being said, I used to have myself a little shelter. It wasn't much, but um, this winter it was keeping me warm. And it was basic. It uh, was a tent shelter. It was uh, a tent shelter with uh, padding on the ground and a bunch of tarps to keep the warmth inside. But unfortunately, it went missing. I was gone for one day, uh, I had an appointment, and came back and it was just gone, all my stuff was gone. But luckily, I know a few people who are damn good people, in fact, one person who's a very good person, his name is Gary, and he gave me the shelter I'm currently in, and it's a big one, and it's nice, and it's warm. Now, I've been in this shelter for about two weeks, it's nice, big, warm, and I've got a bed, and it's been keeping me safe. A few days after I got that shelter, it got robbed. It's one of those things that they're not the best people around sometimes, and they'll, they'll steal from you. Well, what happened was I, I got robbed. Um, they didn't really take anything of value. I didn't have anything of value to take anymore. They kind of just ripped the inside walls of the shelter down looking for something, and I know what they were looking for that they're never going to find from me. Well, at least not any place I stay, because... They were looking for narcotics. I don't drink, I don't do any sort of drug, nothing like that, that's not me. What they did take was all my food. I ended up finding it on my way out, but they had uh, kind of like, you know, winged monkeys took my cans and threw them against the rocks and smashed them open to get inside and wasted like 90%. That's what I was upset at, but that has nothing to do with what the story I'm about to tell. It's more some background information to know, let you know that I'm very on edge about this shelter being robbed and destroyed and stuff because this happened and I need this place to survive. Another thing you guys should know is I carry a very large bag with me that's unmistakably mine through all the marks and damage and scuff marks because I've had it for a while and it's basically something I have to have because anything of importance usually stays in my bag with me, like my sleeping bags. If I lose those, it might as well be over for me because the sleeping bag is what keeps me warm at night. I need that. Well, now we're on the day it's everything is taking place. I unfortunately had somewhere to be that I wasn't gonna be able to bring the majority of my stuff with me. Like I couldn't bring my bag with me. So I had to leave it where it was. Really no biggie. The most I had at the shelter was my bag and Anything of real value, like my phone and my charger, stays with me. I can stay in my pocket. And anything I did have before, it was gone. And I just need my bag and my sleeping bag. And, you know, that's all I need. Well, I've been just returning from my appointment and walking through the trail because I'm kind of hidden in the woods. That's where my camp is, at least. My camp is deep, deep, deep in the woods where, you know, regular people won't find it. And bother me and I won't bother them because I don't want to be a nuisance to anybody. Now I was walking down one of the trails towards my camp and there's these two people approaching me there. Uh, it's a man and a woman. They're very skinny. They're very scrawny. Uh, and I noticed something on them. The man. They are both pushing two bicycles and he has my backpack on his bag. On his back. That's hard to say. Backpack on your back. Now, there's no, impossible to mistake my bag for anybody else's because it's an 80 liter pack. It is the size of my back, a little bit above my head when it's fully packed. It's, and I'm six foot three. Not to mention all the damage on my bag, like all the straps have broken so they're all tied up in a certain way and it's made to fit me, not a scrawny guy. Sorry about the uh, quick little jump cut right there. I arrived at my destination and uh, decided to take a seat on a nice bench to finish the story. Well, if you watch any of my lives, uh, a few days ago, uh, I was down live walking down one of the trails, and these two people approached me and asked me what time it is. And I was saying I had a bad feeling about these people. Um, I said a lot more than that. I described what they looked like, and 
they were obviously addicts and up to no good in the area. And guess what? They were the same people that had my bag. And a little bit you should know about me is I'm a very calm person. I'm a big guy, but I don't think of myself as a tough guy. I'm a teddy bear. I don't like to raise my voice. I don't really like to swear. I do it once on occasion when, you know, it's appropriate. And I try not to lose my cool. And heck, I've never been in an actual fight in my life. But seeing that guy with my bag and my stuff, I lost my cool. Through all the bad and the negative stuff that has happened to me, I'm just tired of being taken advantage of and being stole from him. I lost it. I did not be very nice to him. I started screaming at him, what the heck are you doing with my bag? But not the heck, I was using, what the F are you doing with my bag? What the F, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. And he decided that he was going to be tough and get up into my face and say, oh, yeah, what are you going to do about it, big man, huh? And he's like, that's when I lost it. So my hand went out and I grabbed the guy right by the throat. And again, that's not like me. I have, I don't feel rage like that, but through all the violation, I, I had the rage and I grabbed him. And then his girlfriend or whatever, or wife or whatever, again, they're very scrawny and they, they look like addicts. She grabs me and starts screaming at me and well, my left arm. And I don't know, I just push the guy, I throw the guy and he goes right to the ground like, Stumbles back and face falls, turns around and falls face forward on the ground. And I push her down and she falls and I grab him. I walked over and grabbed my bag, grabbed him, grabbed my bag and started like pulling it. Getting He's like halfway off the ground and he just lets it slip off. And I'm like, I start yelling at them as I'm walking away. But I don't ever want to see them around here again. Don't steal from me. It's one thing you don't do in this area, steal from people. There are, is a lot of people in the general area, in the general vicinity where I am within, I'd say about 30 minutes walking. And... A lot of the people that live down there are just regular nice people who are down on their luck or just don't have the money to pay for an apartment. I know a good 15, 20 people who are just regular people who are not addicts, who have regular, you know, just working class people. That's the way things go with this economy. Well, I got back to my camp after I got my bag back and they had ripped all the inside walls down. Again, that's why I knew they were addicts. I had food there that they left. And to rip a place apart like that, they're, you're looking for something. And what they're looking for is narcotics, which they will never find in there because not who I am. After that, I got on live and we talked for a bit. My, you guys on live who sat with me and talked with me for a bit are awesome people. You really calm me down and, you know, help me get things in perspective. I appreciate that. Before I did get on live, I ended up walking around the area because those two were pushing bikes and it had uh, recently snowed out. So I followed the bicycle tracks from my camp all around the area for a good 45 minutes to an hour back until I found their camp, which I found their camp because pushing bikes, you got tracks, easy to track. And something in my head was saying, okay, I got to get rid of these people because if they did this to me, they're going to do this to other people. And I can't handle, you know, people that'll do that to someone down on their lock or anybody down here is they got to go. And there's a general consensus to, I'd say the community as a whole down here is don't steal from each other. Don't steal from anybody. Just be decent. So that's when I started texting around to people that I know we were going to, and my plan was to get a bunch of people together, go to their camp, tell them they got to go, tear it all down and get rid of them. It didn't quite happen like that. So there's another, an actual encampment that's been in the spot for about 18 years. His name is Keith. He's an old bugger. The man is 80 years old. He's been there for 18 years. He causes nobody trouble. The swell guy, if he needs anything, he'll text me when he's got his phone to say, hey, can't make, can you come up and help me? Which a few days, a week, about a week prior, there was some heavy rain and I went over to help him fix some stuff up because it collected in some spots he couldn't get to. The man is 80, so yeah. Well, in the morning after, I went over to speak to Keith because, again, I texted some people I know and we were going to go together and get rid of them. But I uh, spoke to Keith and said, what happened? I said, do you know these people? And he told me that he has seen them around before. That he knew that they were trouble when he saw them, but he keeps to himself, doesn't want to cause any trouble for anybody else. But, you know, he didn't like the fact that his buddy, the big guy, who would come over and help him at the drop of a hat, was not in a good mood. Well, when I spoke to Keith, he told me to just let it be. He's going to handle it. 
And I trust the old guy because, you know, he's not only got street smarts, but he's got street experience. 18 years worth. And that's just what happened is he handled it. When I went to speak to him today, he said he made a couple, uh, he borrowed the person that stays around him. He borrowed his phone and made a couple calls to his friend in the city who he made friends with Keith. So again, Keith has been there for 18 years. He's been there forever. And he knows all the workers. He knows all the police in the area. Because I checked on him. Again, he's in his 80s. And he went to them and said, if they don't go, they're going to be gone. Uh, he's going to have police, the forestry department, the uh, parks department down here to get rid of him. And also that, uh, I don't know what he said about me to them, but he said some stuff about uh, me being very unhappy with uh, their actions, that I'm a buddy of his and he knows me very well that uh, I'm not going to take that. So it's time to pack your stuff up and go. And you know what? They took the advice and they have packed up. They, uh, they packed up, started packing up immediately after he said that or whatever he said. He didn't tell me exactly what he said, so it had to have been a lot worse than what he actually told me. But yeah, they're, they packed up and they left, and uh, they're not gonna be coming back. And yeah, that's better not just for me, but for him and the general other people down here, the community down here. Because in this specific area, it's further away from the downtown core, and it's a lot safer. People like us, like homeless, there are several kind of us. Some of us are not good. The kind that you see are not the good ones. The kind that make a mess are not the good ones. Uh, generally, if you see a homeless cat and it's a mess, that person's mentally ill or an addict. It's the way you leave your surroundings is a huge reflection on what's going on up in your head. My camp is spotless, I'll tell you that. And it goes pretty much the same for all the people that I know down here. Again, there's only one person that's directly close to me, and his name is Gary, and he's an awesome guy. Keith, Keith takes about 25, 30 minutes hike to get to, and then there's a group of people that are somewhat close to each other, about five minutes from each other, but from my camp to get to them takes about 45 minutes to an hour of hiking to get to. That's how away from people I am. And these people... They're good people, again, they're regular, everyday people who are just trying to live. And when people who are not the best kind of people get around, they can't. They, it hurts us. It hurts us. And again, our rules down here is we don't hurt anybody. We don't steal from each other. We don't steal from anybody. We don't bother any people down here that are hiking. And we don't mess the place up. And I take that a step further is generally on a Saturday and a Sunday or a Sunday, I'll go through uh, the woods and all the camp spots or the fireplaces to where people go down to have fires or the hangout spots where the kids go to clean up. I make it a goal every single week to fill my bag, my very large 80 liter pack up with garbage to get rid of at least once a week. It's kind of one of those things if I'm gonna be down here I think I have a responsibility to help keep the area clean because it's the area has been good to me and it's been keeping me safe. But yeah, that's my uh, that's what happened. That's my little story. And if you are new to the channel, thank you for joining. If you're not new to the channel, thank you for watching. And if you watch at the end, even better. Um, and if you're not subscribed, consider consider subscribing because that'd be really cool. I think I'm a cool guy, man. Man, we're gonna go be cool together. Yeah, you guys take care. Okay, until the next one. If you can't tell, I never know how to actually end these things. Bye now.